Welcome to your first screencast video for your web design course. In this video we'll talk about web browsers, text editors, files, and then we'll create your first HTML page and then we'll talk about how to host your first HTML page on a web server. So let's get started. So there's several web browsers that people use to surf the internet. The most popular is Microsoft's Internet Explorer. Most people uh, use Microsoft um, Windows as their operating system and by default Internet Explorer is the um, browser that is automatically installed and comes with it so without um, trying to install anything else you'll usually use Internet Explorer and so it's by far the most popular browser that people use however there are other browsers that are gaining in a lot of popularity one of them happens to be this browser right here that you're looking at it's Mozilla Firefox and um, the other browser that's uh, gaining in popularity and might even be more popular than Firefox now is uh, Google's uh, Chrome browser. And um, there are some other browsers that people use. Um, one, another one's called Opera, but they, they aren't nearly as popular as uh, those uh, three browsers right there, Internet Explorer, um, Google Chrome, Chrome, and Mozilla Firefox. The next most popular browser is probably also Safari, which comes automatically on an Apple uh, computer with OS X. Um, so uh, I have right here Mozilla Firefox. They pretty much all look the same. People will type their uh, the internet address or their uh, URL up here, and they'll get a web page. So we can go to BYU Hawaii's web page right here and see that. So those are the main browsers that you'll want to have. As a web designer or a web developer, you want to have as many browsers as possible because you want to test your web pages in, e in every browser to see how they look. Now, um, luckily, uh, browsers have come a long way, and most of the browsers will render all their pages to look the same. And when I say render, that means to draw it up and uh, display it the way that you see it here. So most of them will do it now the same, but there will be some subtle differences and you do, do want to test in each and every browser that you think that your um, audience would use. So I would, uh, if um, you can, I would install at least two or three different browsers. You probably at least want to get Google Chrome and Mozilla Firefox and Internet Explorer and test them in those three browsers. Okay, the next tool you'll need is a text editor. And a text editor is like a word processor that you use to type uh, research papers or reports or something like that. Um, and a text editor is a little bit more watered down in that you uh, can't um, highlight text and change the font or change the color or center the text or stuff like that. The only thing you could do is just type text and it's all gonna look the same so um, whatever I type in here looks like this and I can't change its size or the color. Um, I could change maybe the size or the font and the color of all the text but they, it'll all be the same. So in other words it's kind of a boring version of a word processor but it works really well for creating web pages and so this is the text editor I will use for these screencasts. It just um, makes for a nice uh, good background uh, to be able to record um, these screencasts, but there are um, several text editors that you can choose from. This right here is TextMate that works on um, Macintosh computers only, so um, if you have a Windows computer you can't use this one. Um, if you do have a Windows computer you can use Notepad, which is built in. You can just go to your Start men menu and then go to Accessories and you'll find a program called Notepad. Um, I recommend uh, searching on the internet and downloading Notepad++, which will add a lot more features to Notepad to make it a little bit easier for you to edit text. And um, the text editor that I recommend for everybody for this class would be um, Komodo Edit. Um, it's just one of many uh, text editors that you can use. But the good thing about Komodo Edit is um, it's going to work on a Windows machine and a Macintosh machine as well. Um, make sure you don't buy um, their Komodo Edit. They have this Komodo IDE, and you don't need the IDE. We just need a plain text editor 
So when you go to the web page, if you search for Komodo and you go to the web page, there is a link that says Try IDE. You just want to click on the download link and get their free version. So um, don't try to, their IDE, just get their plain text editor. Um, the nice thing about this is um, we'll go ahead and create a new page right here. And I'll go File to the File menu and I'll click Save As. And I'm, notice I've uh, selected the desktop right here. And I'm going to save this as first.html right here. And once you uh, save it as a .html, you can see that the little icon changes to show that this is a web page right there. So what makes a web page? A web page is usually what comes at the very end of the title, a .html will signify that this is a web page. And um, when you type with Komodo Edit is really nice. It kind of shows you a list of suggestions of things that you're trying to type right here. here. And so the reason why I like this is you could kind of explore and, gee, and kind of think, gee, I wonder what this is or what this is or what this is right here. And um, it also uh, builds in stuff that you have to fill in later on. So this is an opening HTML tag and a closing HTML tag right here. And then we could go on from there. So the, as we go on in the class, if you're using Komodo Edit, it will um, bring up lots of uh, suggestions of stuff that you can maybe explore as you type in and do your assignment. So that's uh, the reason why I recommend using Komodo Edit um, just for that feature right there. So um, I would record with this, but having uh, this auto completion stuff and things popping up could be kind of a distraction as a record. So I'm going to use a, a, a text editor that doesn't do that. And um, here, I'll just go ahead and open what I just typed in in the other text editor. And as you can tell, if you start with one text editor and you decide to change to another one, you can just uh, change. You don't have to retype everything and everything's still there. Um, and so this is be your first HTML page right here. And to create your first HTML page, every HTML document should start with a doc type tag. So that this is a less than sign and a greater than sign. And if you notice, every tag starts with a less than sign and it ends with a greater than sign. So um, in HTML, those are tags. And what comes inside of it is the type of tag it is. So this is a doc type tag. The exclamation mark um, doc type says, I'm going to tell you what's in this. And then we say this is an HTML document. And this actually specifies that it's an HTML5 document. In previous versions of HTML, you had to type in a lot more to say, oh, I wanted HTML4 and stuff like that. But HTML5 came, came out and made it a lot easier to type in. So here's um, your first uh, HTML tag. This opens up your HTML document, and then you close it with this right here. So um, as you can tell, these tags come in pairs. This is the opening tag, and this one here is the closing tag. And we know it's the closing tag because it has a backslash right there. And to get a backslash, um, on most keyboards, you press the shift and then the question mark, and it's in the, the bottom right-hand side of, the, of your main keyboard on your computer to get the backslash. So there's uh, your beginning and ending HTML tags. And then here is the beginning and ending the head tag. And we'll put one more tag in here, which is a body tag right here. And right here, we'll uh, work on our indentation. And when I say indentation, I'll talk about this a lot in this class, is that's how far over I space things. If you notice, I started an HTML tag and then I have the ending right here, everything inside of it should be indented. And what that means is there should be some spaces, but usually just press the tab key once. And that will indent um, your um, tags in so that you can kind of see where the beginning tag and ending tags line up. 
so um, it's easy to tell that the end of this HTML is down here. Now, it, on a simple HTML page like this, it doesn't matter too much, but when we start adding a lot of HTML, it could be really hard to um, tell where our beginning and our close ending tags are. And we want to keep these lined up, and it's very common to accidentally forget an ending tag somewhere and have your uh, web page saved like that. And it's kind of hard to track down, but it could, can cause a lot of uh, errors as you um, do that. So, so I'm going to make sure that these tags are indented right. So in the head section is stuff that doesn't get displayed on your web page, but stuff that um, describes your web page. Usually this is for search engines or for the web browsers to kind of tell what the web what is on this web page. So, um, but anything you put in this head section will not actually be displayed in the web page. And then in the body is where all of the stuff that we want to be displayed. So I can say this right here will be displayed. So that's the body. And here's the head. And one important tag in the head will be the title tag. I'm just going to go call it my first HTML page right here. And um, as I... Um, this, this now I said normally this stuff in here isn't displayed well this is just displayed at the very top of the web browser right here in the title so once we have this we can save it and then bring it up in our web browser so I have a web browser here and if you remember I saved this on the desktop so I can open it up by going up to the file menu and um, this isn't on screen but I'm just clicking on the file button and this uh, menu goes down and there's this open file um, right here so you can click on open file browse to your desktop and we can see that file there and we open it up and we could see the stuff that's displayed was in the body section and the title showed up up here now um, if you look at the URL for this you notice that you see this file colon slash last um, and there's three slashes and this uh, uh, tells you that instead of going onto the internet to get this web page we're getting this web page off of our very own computer so this uh, web page isn't getting pulled down from any web server anywhere it's just on our own computer so there is a shortcut to doing what I just did that um, icon that's saved on our desktop we can just drag it right onto our web browser and that will pull it open there. So that's why I recommended you save it on the desktop so you can just grab your icon and drag it right onto the web browser. So just a little bit more about tags is this is the tag name right here that's surrounded by these less than and greater than signs right here. And tags can also have attributes such as an ID right here. And attributes have a name like the ID is the name and then they have a value which is would here would be body right here now um, for this you can actually come up with anything you want for the ID and that's just a way to identify the tag but um, just a general um, format of tags is you have the name of the tag and then you have any attributes with an equal sign and then a quote mark with the value of the attribute so ID is one attribute. Um, another attribute we can have is a class right here. And um, again, this is the name of the attribute and this is the value right here. So all tags have um, a name and then um, some tags can have some attributes as well. Sometimes the attributes are mandatory and sometimes the attributes are optional. Like in this case, the ID and the class are purely optional, um, but we can leave it in there if we want to. And we'll learn more about what these mean later on, but just to show you the general format of what a tag is. And um, we can also I'll introduce um, another tag. This is called the H1 tag, or it's short. H is short for header one and this means it's the most important header on the page so um, 
here we can put a title again, my first HTML page. And notice I end the tag again with a backslash right here. So what I'm um, saying is this text right here is part of the header and it's the most important heading that I want on my page. And that's why I use the one right there. And we'll learn more about header tags later on, but just to introduce a tag. And of course we can have attributes on this tag like an ID um, right here if we want to. Of course, that's optional, so we don't have to have it if we don't want to use it. But it is, um, we could put attributes in there. And again, in some tags, attributes are required, and um, other tags, um, attributes are optional. And then uh, I'll, I'll show you one more tag, and this is the paragraph tag right here. And that basically says that this text right here is part of a paragraph. So um, it's a good way to identify the text. So what I'm doing here, and this is just a brief introduction, is I'm describing my page. So when you're writing HTML um, and creating an HTML page, everybody thinks about how should this page look. But when you're creating HTML and you're um, defining things with tags, basically you're not um, really deciding how this page should work, look, but you're deciding um, what is the content of this page and what type of content it is. So I'm determining that this is a header, that this is a paragraph, and we'll learn more tags. So most of the tags, instead of deciding how it looks, should be describing what the text actually is. And when we get into CSS later on in the course, that's when we'll start worrying about how the page looks. So the first part of this class might be a little bit boring because we're not going to be able to make really nice looking web pages until we learn CSS and that's when CSS we look about how we worry about how the page looks. But at the very beginning we're only worried about um, describing what our content is. So I just described this as a header and this as a paragraph. And I save this and I could go into my browser and refresh it and we could see our heading and our paragraph. Now we could tell that the heading is different than the paragraph, but I might not want it this big or I want it, might want to make it a different color and stuff like that. And all of the presentation details will be in CSS. But in order to learn CSS, we have to learn HTML first. So um, just bear with us as we learn HTML and know that we'll be able to make our page look a lot better once we learn CSS. Now, if you're enrolled in the BYU Hawaii online class, we'll provide a web server where you can host your website. So um, this right here is your interface to that web server. And um, it's called cPanel. And in the video notes, we'll um, describe how you can either create an account or log into an account that has been created for you. And that will, once you log into your uh, web server, then you'll see a web page like this. And you can scroll down here to this file section right here, and you'll see the file manager right here. So this is, you'll want to click on that. And um, usually you'll want it to go to your web root right here, but just uh, for information, we'll go to our home directory. Now I have quite a lot of files in here, but your web root is the root of your website, so you'll have a www directory, which is the same thing as a public HTML directory. It looks like these are two different uh, folders or directories, but they really go to the same spot, so it doesn't matter which one you click on. Um, I'll just click on www, and as you can see, I have a lot of content up here on my uh, web server, um, but I'll make a new folder for all of my content. now. Um, in your assignments there'll be directions on exactly where you should save your files and stuff like that but you'll probably need to create a new folder and um, this folder I'm just going to call web design right here and then I can double click in that web design and this gives me a nice blank spot right here and again you'll want to follow the directions for your assignment on where you save your uh, files um, and those directions will be in Canvas and how to get into this and uh, what directories to create and where to save your files. But um, 
if I want to host that uh, page on my web server, um, I can uh, upload that page right here. So I can upload right here and uh, select right here that first HTML page right there. And once it completes, I could go back to here and now I'll see this. Another good thing about this uh, web host is that you will have a um, code editor and um, you can click on that code editor, click edit, and then you can see your web page that you uh, created right there. Now, um, for this class, you might be able to do all of your web page editing right here in this uh, web server if you want. Uh, the only problem is you won't have backup copies, um, so you're welcome to work on um, on the your desktop and then upload the files later. But you can also edit your pages right here. So um, instead of saying this text will be displayed right here, um, we'll add in um, this is a paragraph about my right there and one other thing one other tag that you want to have is the meta, meta tag and say charge set equals utf-8 right there and what this uh, says and notice I put this in my um, I put this in my head um, tag right here and at my tab, my indentation did get a little messed up, so I'm going to snap my fingers and fix it. Okay, now I fixed my indentation, and again, it's important to fix that. If you notice, we have the HTML opening tag indented over. Now we have the head tag, and it's the start, then we indent over, and then the closing head tag is the same space over right here, so they kind of match up. Same with the body tag right here. So, um, the, the last thing that you need in your web page is this uh, meta tag right here. So it's the name of the meta. And again, we have the attribute, char set, and utf-8. And what this means is that we're using the ASCII character set. And the ASCII character set is basically the first way to encode um, characters using, the, using binary or a computer language, basically with ones and zeros. Um, but uh, the first way when Americans first uh, invented the computer and came up with a character set, they didn't include Japanese and Chinese characters, so they didn't leave enough room for all of those characters. So there's different uh, char sets that we can use or character sets that we can use to include more characters. But for this class, we'll just use the basic English character set right here. So. Um, in order for web browsers to fully understand your uh, web page without any problems or complications, you should have this char set. Now, you won't see um, your web page should display just normally. Um, the browsers ignore it if it's missing, but this really should be in here. And this is saying that you um, are using the English character set. And up over here, there's save changes. And then in a new tab, we can pull up our web page right here now if you notice that um, my web root right there I created that one folder called the web design right here and now we see the contents of that folder right here and here is my web page right here and this is hosted um, so everybody can uh, see this web page on my web server right here so um, You'll probably be given an assignment Well, you'll have to create your first web page and then host it on the web server provided for you in the class. And again, look in um, your notes either on the assignment page or that accompany this video to show you how to log into your web server and how to create an account and where to save your files as well.